In this guide to getting more from Affinity Photo with a web designer's perspective, I'll show you how you can take advantage of the batch job options, a tool that's very similar to Photoshop's batch processing. But why use Affinity Photo over Photoshop? Simple really, the price. If all you use is Photoshop, that's going to cost you at least £120 per year. For almost the same price, you could have all three of the Affinity tools, and right now, at the time of recording this video, you can get them all for 50% off. So that includes the PC version, the Mac version, and the iPad versions of the tools. In my opinion, that is an insane deal. Anyway, with that out of the way, the batch job function allows you to quickly batch resize a collection of images, save them to different formats and different sizes all in one go. You can also run one or more macros at the same time to process your images. So this is awesome if you're working on web design projects with lots of images, lots of sizes, and you need to quickly resize large collections, like for example, on an e-commerce website. So if you're ready to find out how, let's open up Affinity Photo and take a look. So here's my selection of images that I'm ready to resize. They're all in 1080, and I've got a resized folder which we're going to use to actually stay, save the files to. So all I need to do is just go into Affinity Photo. We're going to come up to the menu in the top and choose File and come down to Batch Job. That's going to open up the new Batch Job options. And this is pretty simple and straightforward. We've got two separate sections to this. The left-hand side is the images we want to process. The right-hand side are all the settings that we have available to us. So first of all, let's add some sources. We're going to add, and I'm simply going to go and find those images that I've got on my desktop, and we're going to select all of these. We'll open them up, and now they're listed on the left-hand side. Now, the parallel processing basically means these will all process at the same time. If you have really large images, you may want to disable that so it only processes them one at a time. It's up to you. It doesn't really make too much of a difference for most use cases that we're going to use it for. On the right hand side, we've got save into original location, at which point you need to authorize that. But what I prefer to do is to save into its own dedicated location. We'll choose that option and click the three digits on the right hand side. This then allows us to choose where we want to save them. So it tells us select the folder to which you want to process files to be saved. I've already created a folder called resized. So we'll open that up and we'll just simply say, okay. Obviously, if you haven't created a folder, you can just create a new folder from here and then say OK once you've finished. Once we've done that, we've now set up where we want to save them and the files we want to process. Now we have the options on how we want to process them. And you can see at this point in time in version 1.9, we have five separate options. We could save it as a default Affinity Photo format, the AF Photo format, or we can save as JPEGs, PNGs, TIFFs, or as an open EXR. The nice thing about this and the thing that I really like about how Affinity works with this, we can set different parameters for each of the different file types we may want to save as. So for this example, we'll uncheck the AF photo and we're going to say we want to save this as a JPEG and as a PNG. So now we can go over and we can set the resize values if we want to. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we want to set these to the high point. In other words, we don't want to deal with the long edge, we want to deal with the short edge. You can put both the width and the height if you want to, or you can put just width or just height, and that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to say for the JPEGs, I want to save these as 720 on the height. And then for the PNGs, we're going to say we're going to save them as 540 on the height. No real reason to do this other than the fact it's just a good way to demonstrate things. Now, you'll also notice we've got three dots to the right-hand side of everything except for the AF Photo option. And this is where we can configure additional options for that particular file format. So if we click the JPEG options, you can see we can choose pixel format, the resampling method, any math that may be included, the ICC pro profile, if we want to include it, the quality, whether we want to set this progressive, and so on. So you can set anything you want inside there. I'm going to leave them as they are for this example. And you can do the same then for the PNGs. But you'll see you get slightly different options because PNG has different options associated with it. So again, you can set what you want in here, including things like ICC profiles, whether you want to embed the metadata. So we'll just uncheck that for this example. And we'll just come back out of this. So we've got all the basics in there. We could now run this if we wanted to. But if we want, we can also apply macros. Now, if you've never used a macro inside Affinity Photo, and if you've used something like Photoshop in the past, you're probably used to actions. Now, actions, or macros in this case, are simply a list of different stages. So, for example, it could be open a file, change the file format, resize the file, then convert it to black and white, then save it. Those, you could record all those actions and save that as a macro. 
And as you can see, we've got five options that are pre-built into Affinity Photo, but you could easily create your own macros. So we're gonna leave those as they are for now, but if you wanted to add them, you could simply select it, click apply, that will move it over to the right-hand side and show you the applied macros, and we can stack these on top of each other. So we can say, we'll convert to sRGB, and then we want to convert it to black and white. So you can stack these as much as you want. So you can create all different types of macros and then build them up. So we're gonna just remove those, and we're just gonna simply say, okay. So we've done everything we want now, we'll hit okay. That's gonna batch process those, and as you can see, that literally took a second to process all those images. If we go back over to our folder, you can see there's the resized folder, and there's all of our images inside. We've got JPEGs and PNGs. If we select the JPEG and take a look at the info for that, we can see this is 720 on the short side, and if we do exactly the same for the PNG, we'll just open that up and take a look at the file info, and you can see this one is 540 pixels. So it's really easy to batch resize these, generally in seconds for smaller images. So now we've seen how easy it is to batch process your images, let's see how we can make it even more powerful by creating our own macros and applying them to our batch processing jobs. Okay, so we're gonna keep this really simple just to show you how easy it is to create a macro. Nothing special. What we're gonna do is we've got the macro panel open on the left-hand side, and you can access this if you don't see it by simply coming into view. You can come down to Studio and make sure that macro is enabled. With that set up, we've got a couple of options. The first one is to start recording, the second one is to stop, and the third one is to play the macro. Then you've got options to reset it, to save it or add it to your library, to export or to import. So what we're gonna do is just enable this, and we're just gonna do a couple of really dodgy looking effects. So we're gonna filter, and we'll come to blur. We'll add a Gaussian blur, and we'll go with those. Hit apply on there, and you can see now that puts in the Gaussian blur option. The checkbox says that that is enabled, and then you've also got options you can configure this to edit it, and we'll come back and take a look at that in a moment. So next one, we're gonna come into filters and we're just gonna come down to colors and we're gonna add a really ugly looking vignette around the edge of our document. And there we go. Let's just say that that looks really cool and we love the look of that. Hit apply. Okay, so now we've applied two different filters to this. Now you can do lots of different things. Most of the things you can do inside Affinity Photo can be included as part of a macro. Now, let's come back over and take a look at the edit option, the little cog. If we click on there, you can see that allows us to change some of the parameters. In this example, the radius. We come down to the vignette, we can click on there, and you can see that gives us the exposure, hardness, and so on, which are the same settings we saw. So you could fine tune this if you wanted to when you run the macro, all those kinds of things. So now we've finished creating our macro, we're gonna hit stop on there, and that now has created a macro. Now. We haven't saved this yet, so we're gonna add this into our collection. So we're gonna click the second icon in, and we say add a macro. We're gonna save it to the default category, that's perfectly fine, and we're just gonna call this dodgy effect. And we'll say okay. So we just saved that. Switch back to our macro, you can see everything is still inside there. Now, now we've done that, let's just do a batch process. So let's just close this down. So we're gonna file, and we're just gonna simply close this file. Say, no, we don't want to save it. And uh, we'll come back to file and we're going to choose new batch job. So we'll do the same thing again. We'll just add some images in. And we'll grab these four images and we'll open those up, or five images, I should say, or even six images. And you can see that our new macro is inside here called dodgy effect. So now we can just click on that and we can apply it. We don't have to set any options for resizing us on. We can just disable that. But for this example, let's just say we're gonna save this as a JPEG and we're not gonna do anything like changing the size or anything on there. So now we'll just click on OK, and that will run this and apply that filter to it. The only thing we need to do is save this into, we'll click and we'll just drop that into resized again. Click OK, and we'll just say OK. Done. So now if we just go back and take a look at those files, you can see those new ones have been added in. You can see the thumbnail, that they've got the vignette and the blur around it. And we Double click to open it up, you can see there's the image. Now it is worth noting at this point, you'll see that this hasn't incremented the file names or anything. This has replaced the original edits we did. So be careful of that if you're saving things into the same location. Affinity Photo definitely makes batch processing images a quick and painless affair. Now as always, all the applicable links are in the description below. And if you made it this far in the video, well why not give that thumbs up button a click? It really does help me out. And while you're at it, if you like the content, why not also click the subscribe button and slap the bell icon. But 
If you didn't find the content useful, well feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice as that seems to work pretty well too. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tuts, until next time, take care.